Hi kids, uh, this is Grandpa, and I'm excited to read for you today a story I really liked when I was a kid. It's uh, Marlene and the Magic Brush, and it's written by Hisako Kimishima and illustrated by Kai Wakana. And it's about this, this little, I believe it's a little boy, and his magic paintbrush. And I think you'll really like it. Um, I gotta give a little more credit here where credit is due. Um, the English version is by Alvin Triselt and um, the book was translated. Um, but it was originally published by Kaisei Sha in Tokyo, Japan. But this is uh, published at the Parents Magazine Press in New York. Okay. So, there, what, there once lived in China a poor peasant boy named Ma Lin. Day after day, he worked hard in the fields so that he would have food to eat and a small hut to live in. Ma Lin's greatest dream was to be an artist, but the boy had not so much as a copper coin with which to buy a brush. One day, as he trudged along under a heavy load, he passed by the house of a famous artist. Going over to the great gate in the high wall, Mylene peeked in, hoping to see the great man at work. <clears throat> Silently he stood watching the artist as he painted a portrait of the Mandarin. At last the boy could hold his excitement no longer and he boldly spoke up. Oh, great one, he said. Could you let me have one of your brushes, an old one that you don't need anymore, so that I too might be a paint, be, uh, might paint a picture? On hearing this unexpected voice, the artist turned around when he saw it was only a poor peasant boy daring to ask for one of his brushes. He became very angry. Ha! So you think you would like to paint, he cried. Away with you and back to your field. And he drove the frightened Maline from his gate. This is the Mandarin over here in the window. That's who he was painting. But Mylene would not be discouraged. He drew pictures whenever he could, using a stone to scratch on the flat rock or his fingers to draw a, uh, in the wet sand in the riverbank. When he went back to his hut at night, he drew pictures on the wall by the light of the flickering candle. Soon he had covered the walls with pictures of everything he could think of. With practice, Mylene became more and more skillful. One day he drew a picture of a small chicken. A hawk flew by and circled around and around thinking it was a real chicken. Another time he drew a scowling wolf on a rock with <clears throat> in the pasture and the cows and the sheep were so frightened by this wolf that they would not go near the rock even though it was surrounded with lush, sweet grass. Isn't that funny? Mm -hmm. But with all his skill, Maline did not have a brush. Lying one night on his bed, he looked around his room at all the pictures he had scratched on the clay walls and sighed. He had scratched on the, oh, Oh, if only I had a brush, he said. What beautiful pictures I would paint. With that, there was a flash of light and standing before the boy was an old wizard. He was leaning on a twisted cane and his white beard fell to the floor. Maline, he said with a creaky voice, you have worked very hard and now you have earned a brush. Use it wisely for it is 
it has great power. And saying this, he handed the trembling boy a beautiful paintbrush. Before Mylene could even stammer out a thank you, the old man had vanished. Sometimes I get two pages at once. There we go. With a cry of joy, the boy rushed to the one bare spot on his wall, and he quickly painted a proud and happy rooster. But he had no sooner painted the last curling feather of the rooster's tail when the bird sprang from the wall and flew to the window. There he gave a great cock-a-doodle-doo and disappeared into the night. Now I know why the wizard said the brush had great power. And Maline said, do not, do not worry, old man. I will use it wisely. That's a beautiful rooster. I don't think I've ever seen one get that pretty. The next morning, as Mylene was walking to the mountain to gather firewood, he passed a rice paddy. There he saw a man and a young boy pulling a heavy plow to till the paddy. Mylene quickly went over to the wall of the old shed and painted a strong and healthy water buffalo. Again, just as he finished, the beast leaped from the wall and with a low moo, he lumbered down to the paddy. Now, with the help of the buffalo, the man and his son soon had the paddy ready for planting. Just at that moment, the mandarin came by, and seeing the power of Maline's magic brush, he ordered his men to seize the poor boy. When they had brought Maline to the Mandarin, he commanded the boy to paint a pile of silver coins for him. Maline, remembering the wizard's words, refused, and the Mandarin had him thrown in the dungeon with his own prisoners, or with the other prisoners. Maline soon discovered that the other men had what the other men had done no wrong but he had been imprisoned by the mandarin so that he could steal their lands never fear said the boy i will have us all free before too long as the night passed Maline waited until the guards had dozed off then he quickly painted a door on the wall the prisoners pushed against it the door swung open and they fled into the night. The Mandarin's men came chasing after Maline, but the boy easily escaped on the fine horse he had painted for himself. Maline knew he would not be safe if he remained on the Mandarin's land, so he rode for many miles until he came to a strange village. Here he continued until he came uh, to, to help anyone he could with his magic brush. He painted buffaloes to help farmers in their fields. He painted chickens for the farmer's wives and he painted toys to keep the children happy. One day he came to some farmers hard at work, carrying buckets of water to their dried up fields. That work is too hard for you, said Marlene and he set upon painting a fine water wheel so that it would be easier to bring the water from the river into the fields. And so it was that Maline and his wonderful brush became known throughout all the land. It wasn't long before the Mandarin learned where Maline was living. He sent his soldiers to the village and when they found the boy, they seized him and dragged him back to the palace. The Mandarin instantly took away the brush and commanded that the boy be thrown into the dungeon. Without this, I don't think he'll be able to escape so easily, he laughed. 
Then he sent for the court painter and ordered him to paint pictures with the brush. What would you have me paint, he asked. A tree, said the Mandarin, a tree with leaves of gold that will fall like the rain when I shake the branches. Now the Mandarin realized that only Ma Lin could paint pictures so that they would become real. Sending for the boy, he spoke kindly to him. Ma Lin, he said softly, will you paint but one picture for me? I will give you your freedom, the boy thinking of a way to trick the greedy man, agreed to do so as he asked. Thinking I might have skipped a page. I hope I didn't. But I think we understood what happened there. <laughs> that tree that didn't come to life. Uh, the Mandarin's eyes lit up with delight. He handed the brush to Maline and said, Paint me a mountain of pure gold. The boy went to work at once, painting a broad expanse of blue sea. The wide sea spread all across the wall. Why do you paint the sea? demanded the Mandarin. I ordered a mountain of gold. I have painted, I have not finished, said the boy quietly. And with that, he painted a great gold mountain rising up out of the sea. Beautiful, beautiful, cried the man. Now paint me a ship so that I can sail to my mountain and bring me and bring back the gold. In a twinkling, Ma Lin had painted a fine ship worthy of a Mandarin who was about to travel to a mountain of gold. The man wasted no time in hurrying aboard with a troop of his finest soldiers. The sail was raised, and slowly the ship rowed out to sea. Too slow, too slow, shouted the Mandarin. Give us, a, give us some wind to speed us along. Obediently, Ma Lin painted a wind cloud. The wind came whistling down and the sails filled, filled out. The wind ruffled the water and the green waves and rose about the ship. Too much, cried the Mandarin angrily. You will sink the ship, my ship. But Maline paid no attention. He went right on painting storm clouds. Now the wind howled and the and shrieked and the waves crashed about the ship. Then with great crack, the ship split in two and sank into the stormy waters. Once more, Malin returned to his simple life with the pleasant and always ready to help them with their work. And never again was he forced to use his magic brush for evil and greed. So what's the moral to that story? Do you think it's if we have special talents that we use them to do good? I think so. I think, uh, I think we always want to, if we've been given good good things to use in life that we should always help others and not to to use them to to just um, seek out the riches. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the story of Maling. We want you to uh, remember to um, subscribe to the channel and to give us a thumbs up and to um, select the uh, uh, the bell, um, and to if you have any stories you want us to read on our channel, to email us. Thanks.